everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about my outerwear collection from blazers to jackets to coats and show you how I would style each of these pieces into different outfits. I did a similar video to this about 2 or 3 years ago and because I've had a lot of these pieces now for 2, 3, 4 years, I feel like I can give a better review than I did in the past so hopefully there will be something useful I can share as well. As I talk through, you'll see that some of these styles are definitely older pieces so the exact option might not be available anymore and if I can find something similar, I will link to it down below. My first category are my check blazers. The reason why I love these is because I never really put them away, so they're really an all year round staple for me. In the summertime, sometimes I'm able to pull it out for an evening. In the wintertime, I layer it inside coats. And then of course they're perfect for that transitional season. This first one is from Sandro. I find that when I'm wearing a really simple outfit like I am today, these just make the outfit feel very complete with that little bit of pattern in the jacket. The Sandra one I purchased for about 100 euro in the sales and after two years of a lot of wear, the material still looks as it did when I got it. When it comes to the fit of this blazer, these two have a lot in common. So both of them have a little bit of padding on the shoulder, but the shoulder fits really nicely without pulling or being too oversized. I like that it's long line without being too long. In the cutaways, you'll see exactly where it hits on me. And I also like that the sleeves fit right. So this sleeve I've gotten tailored, whereas this sleeve I haven't. And I really like the fit of both of these. This particular blazer I found on the Outnet during Black Friday last year. And I was really drawn to the color of this, which is a little bit brighter than this particular blazer. This has a red pattern that goes throughout. It's a little bit more vibrant, but still on that gray base. Because I do reach for a lot of outfits like what I'm wearing now, which are quite plain, I find that this just adds the perfect amount of pattern into a look um, while still being very wearable. Of all the outerwear in my wardrobe, I would say these check and plaid blazers are my most worn. The next category for me are my oversized blazers. I know from speaking with you guys in the comments that some of you really really love oversized blazers and others not so much. But for me, the purpose these serve is that if I'm wearing something really fitted on the inside, I love the proportion that an oversized blazer can bring. My first blazer is from Uniqlo and it's part of the men's collection in the J Plus line. I tried on a few from the women's collection, a few from the men's, and the reason why I went with this is because I really like that drop shoulder and it's just so comfortable in comparison to something fitted. So the women's collection one was very fitted on the shoulder and for me this looks a bit more relaxed and it means I can layer on the inside a bit more freely. This is my summer blazer because it is incredibly lightweight. It's almost like a shell but it's still made from 100% wool. Because this was released as part of the spring summer collection, I feel like this weight makes a lot of sense and I enjoy it for the summer. In the other three seasons, I tend to reach for this one. This one's from Tibby and this is their Liam blazer. This is one of the most dramatic oversized blazers that I feel like I've come across because it's very long and it's very wide. I personally really love this for just how oversized it is and I really like the shape of it. It's so oversized, it has like a swing to it because of how much material that there is. Is. and I also like the function where you can kind of button it at the side. I like some of the details, for example, this D-ring at the back. This next jacket I have is my most casual jacket and I would say I have quite a few blazers in my wardrobe because other than this there's still a few more but with casual jackets I don't have that many and the reason is because I know from my style I gravitate so much towards blazers it takes a lot for a casual jacket 
to compete with that and that's why this is pretty much the only casual jacket that I actually wear I like that this reminds me a little bit of a men's chore or work jacket with the pockets and then this type of material it has a very utility look to it which I think looks cool in a very similar way to how I style my blazers this is great at dressing down feminine outfits it's great at dressing down more formal outfits in general so for example a slip dress and it makes the outfit feel very everyday I have a tendency to wear this in the spring and summer I think it's mostly because of the vibrant color um, I think the weight of it is also pretty good it's a mid-weight material that works on the summer evening and then also in the transitional stage as well but it's definitely not warm enough for winter and if it's not too late I can bring chocolate And maybe if you want them Some roses too Cause it's been a long year But maybe you missed me. I am gonna move on to coats now and start with the trench coat because it is the lightest and it's also my most worn coat. This one is from Andover Stories and I absolutely love the style of this. It's a little bit different to your traditional trench coat because of the shape. I feel like this is a more minimal take on a traditional trench coat. It's only got the one row of buttons, it's got a drop shoulder, and it's missing a lot of the traditional details of a trench coat. But I still feel like it looks very classic, and I really like how comfortable this is. As I go through this video, you'll see that there are definitely things that repeat, and I always look for the same things in a coat, one of them being a really comfortable shoulder and sleeve. This is pretty much my dream trench if we're talking about the style. Even though I just said I really like the style of this, I can pretty much appreciate any trench coat design. As long as there aren't too many bells and whistles, I feel like a trench coat no matter the style, just looks super super chic. I personally wear a trench coat with just about everything, but there is one specific case that I exclusively wear the trench coat. If I'm wearing a very colourful outfit, I think that the colour of a trench coat really helps balance the outfit out. If I style really colourful pieces with black or white, it creates a lot of contrast and it almost brings your attention to the colour. Whereas if you style really colourful, bright colours with this tone, it really helps neutralise those colours and it almost makes it feel a lot more wearable. So that's why in the cutaways, you'll see me style a lot of brighter colours with the trench coat. I think it's the perfect way to balance it out and tone those colours down if it feels too bright for me. So here's my love letter and trust it to the weather right across the waves and flow through the clouds and when it's delivered do what you want with it this next coat I'm sharing is from Mango and this is my favourite coat. This is basically my model coat and the coat that I think all future coats should be based on. This is also from four years ago and it's my oldest coat but it's really taken me this long to realise that this is the perfect coat out of everything else I own. Let's start with the basic which for me is fabric. This coat is 50% wool and generally I always like to say 50% is usually what I look for as a minimum. If it's higher than that, great, but 50% usually means that the price and quality ratio is pretty good. The pros of this coat is that it is so comfortable. From the weight of it, due to the lack of lining, to this really oversized shape, the coat is super comfortable to wear. It's really easy to wrap around yourself, be super cozy, and not feel like you're lugging around this really heavy, thick coat. I know lining is a very attractive quality for some people, especially if you live somewhere colder, but because I don't, um, lining doesn't really do too much for me. When I talk about loving the drop shoulder and the shape of the sleeve, it's not purely from an aesthetic point of view, it's also from the point of view that I can wear really chunky knits on the inside and still comfortably wear this coat without anything pulling. For me, this is the key to a versatile coat because it means it can take me from transitional season to middle of winter. Of course, I'm talking about milder climates, but it does mean it's more versatile. The material has some wear, as you'll expect after four years, but I still plan on having this for a long, long time, just because it's holding up great, and I love the look of it. Finally spent. I was left with the memory of the 
Next up, I'm gonna talk about these two lighter color coats that I have. So this one's from The Curated and this one's End of a Stories. I'm gonna start with the one from The Curated. I've actually done an entire video reviewing this, which I'll share down below. This is the classic coat in the size small. This is definitely one of the nicer coats in my wardrobe and it's 70% wool, 30% cashmere. I think it's hard to beat. The hand feel is as amazing as it sounds because I do know that there can be coats that are 100% wool and then you feel it and it's quite coarse. This one feels very soft, um, which is of course what you want. As I said in that video and after some time I still agree, the quality is impeccable and I can't really fault a thing. The fit of it is also really nice. I'm more petite and I don't feel like this is drowning me even though I sized up. The only downside for this coat is my personal preference as opposed to the coat itself. So my preference is that I can wrap my coat um, and there's a little bit more material. So as you wrap it, the bottom starts to create like a V shape and there's not that much material on the bottom. I really like coats that are super roomy and that's just a personal preference. When it comes to the lighter color, I think it's very pretty. Would I do it again? Probably not, just because it is quite delicate. This coat in comparison, one of the benefits is actually that it doesn't show marks as easily as this one. I'll talk about it in a bit more detail in a moment, but this one definitely does show the marks if you're not careful. Before I move on to reviewing this, see how the colors are slightly different? This one leans a lot more cool and it's a lot more pink, whereas this is a lot more beige. I think that the beige makes it so much more versatile than the light pink, and the light pink I really only style with cool colors and mostly gray. So here's my love letter Trust it to the weather I ride across the waves And float through the clouds Yeah, when it's delivered now onto this one. When I feel it in my hand, immediately it's nowhere near as nice as that one. You can't compare it. This is 60% wool. I think it feels similar to my mango one. It is nice enough, it's quite soft, but it's not that silky, luxurious feeling of the curated one. I do enjoy this coat a little bit more than the other one, and let me tell you why. So first up, there's a lot more material. So I feel like I can wrap it up, be super cozy, and at the same time, it manages to be super lightweight. And that's an unbeatable combination for me. Some of the most important things in a coat that I look for. As I said before, I think the color is a bit more versatile because it leans a bit more neutral as opposed to pink. This beige color also has specks of other colors in it, and because of that, it doesn't show marks. I feel like if I have gotten a mark on this before, I haven't been able to see it. I've taken this traveling. I have gone to a lot of places where I probably shouldn't have worn a nice beige wool coat. And I've gone there and I've never had a mark on it, which I think is pretty impressive. And I'm sure wearing the other coat, marks will show up so quickly. So that's something I can really appreciate and it's very important when you're purchasing a lighter coat. Um, this is Zach's style, I think is no longer available, but they have one that is pretty much identical to this on their website. Right across the waves and flow through the clouds yeah, when it's delivered to what you want with it I've got this navy coat to share with you, which is in a lighter material. It is 50% wool and then 50% synthetic, but it's a very light, drapey fabric and it's from COS. I really love this navy jacket, but at the same time, it is a little bit hit and miss. The good part is that it looks so beautiful on because of the material. So at the bottom, it creates a really nice shape and I feel like COS is really good at doing this. A lot of their pieces have really beautiful silhouette and shapes and this is no exception. The fact that it's really long makes it feel very elegant and I really enjoyed this material actually. Um, it's warm, but it's light. What I would do differently is I would just go for something with a different shoulder design. I can really only wear this type of thin knit on the inside. The moment I even try to put on something medium weight, it starts to pull on the shoulder. The thing is, I could have sized up, but I don't think it would have made enough of a difference because this is also pulling a little bit the moment we go for a medium weight knit. This coat is super chic for those few weeks that is transitional season, but the moment it gets slightly colder, it just doesn't work, and I really hate that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's been too long, but I heard from someone that you're back in town. And if it's not too late, I can bring. 
coat that you guys really like but I actually do not wear as often as my other coats is this black one and this is a coat from Cezanne a few years ago um, I don't think it's available anymore but this is a wool coat it's about 70% wool and very classic in every sense of the word the material feels really beautiful the shape feels very timeless the color is black so very classic I think the only thing stopping me from wearing this more often is the fact that it's black we're given the option I'll always go for navy I'll always go for brown or beige as opposed to a pure black if you like this coat I will try and find some similar black coat options to link down below in a nice wool material category is the most statement and this is where I'm going to bring out the check coat. I really love check and plaid if you haven't noticed. Um, I feel like it's an extension from the blazers just to the coats. This one here is from Petit Studio. Petit Studio, I have had a lot of their coats in the past and every season I feel like they do a little bit better than the last. In my review a couple of years ago now, I remember thinking and saying that the wool was a bit coarser than what I would like despite it being a really high percentage of wool. So this one, I feel like is a lot nicer than the ones I reviewed back then. I really love the color palette on this. So the fact that it's got these gray and khaki colors, I think looks really nice. And it's also got this navy on the inside. For me, the biggest pro of this is definitely the aesthetic and the way it looks. Um, in terms of the con, I don't really have any major cons. I would say that it's not the lightest coat I own. Um, it's also not super heavy and the quality of it feels much nicer than before but it's nothing that's ultra soft. When I wear it with all navy, it looks really chic because the inside's navy and I just think it ties perfectly. Any kind of neutral works really well. When you wear it with green, I also really like that it pulls out the green color in the checks. In terms of sizing, I will have my measurements as well as the size I took in a lot of detail down below. This is definitely one of my favorite coats because I love the color, I love the silhouette. It feels comfortable and it has the features that I've mentioned I like. So it pretty much has all of the features of this coat, but in a check material. I think I found the winning formula when it comes to coats I like. So in the future, if I do bring in another coat, I have a lot of coats already. If I do bring another one, um, it will tick all of these boxes. It's been a long year, but maybe you missed me. I think you might remember the words of the So that's pretty much my outerwear collection. I do have a few options I didn't talk about in this video just because those are really specific pieces and it's really hard to find similar things so I didn't feel like there was a point in talking about them too much or they were duplicating pieces and it was just too boring to go through everything. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I would love for you to go hit the like button down below and let me know what is your favorite most worn coat in your wardrobe. Have a lovely week ahead and I will see you next week. Bye!